dreams here. If I don't harmonize enough, the colors get harsh or tacky or garish. And if I harmonize them too much, they get muddy. And muddy is just how it sounds. If they get too harmonious, everything starts looking kind of brown. And it'll be a brown orange and a brown green. But that brown, that mud color comes through. That's different than getting grayer, where it's a clean temperature, but it's a very, very gray version of blue. But if it's a brown blue, if you feel brown and everything, it's getting muddy. So you got a tightrope to walk again. We don't want to make them so harmonious that all the colors look exactly the same. We don't want to make them so different that they have nothing in color. We want to balance them. If I'm going to screw up, no, it won't get muddy if I push the color of the light. So if this just gets yellower and yellower and yellower, like our little girl on the beach did with the hat, it's just going to feel like this incredibly yellow day. And everything gets yellow. It doesn't get muddy at all. Or if we make it greener and greener and greener, even though some things get brown, as you go from local color to local color, each keeps its own character. This looks gray, blue, green. This looks brown, red. This looks grass, green. They each have their own character. They don't feel brown, this, brown, that. They feel green, this, green, that. So if you let the light source dominate, it will do its job. And then if you have light and shadow, which is most of the situation, then everything is going to be a bluer version here and a yellow version here. And a couple colors might up in, end up being browns. You might, this got kind of brown, but it all didn't get brown. It became a different variation. So when the majority of the colors shift browner, dirtier, muddier, trouble. But if everything's overall just pushed to the blue, and some of that blueing of the orange made it brown, that's okay. Or push to the yellow, that's okay. So it's just overall um, um, uh, balance. So the color key would be picking a color or colors that everything's harmonized to. The key is the one that everything's moving to, starting to look yellower. It's key to yellow. It's starting to look bluer. It's key to blue for a couple of colors. Quite often, if you've got a strong uh, setup, you'll want to use three colors to keep. And that's a safe bet if you have a fairly complicated. You have a real powerful light source, real basic, uh, not too extreme color ranges, not lots of different color shifts. Two works fine because we can do the warm and cool of the light and shadow. Everything's a shift off that. There might be a little patch that's way out of whack. We don't care about that. Those will settle down fine. That's as long as I comb my hair. If I got a couple of flyaways, it's okay. Still looks pretty well combed. Sometimes it doesn't out. Once a class, it's really good. Um, we're talking about the big areas, the big, big uh, design shapes. But three works out pretty nicely if you have a pretty ambitious painting. Because we get our light and shadow, everything's going to get yellow or everything's going to get bluer kind of idea. And then you have one other color for any wild color variations. So for example, if I had a red apple, and I had green grass. And I had blue sky. We have two ways to harmonize this. One, it's already harmonizing not so badly. Everything's a little pastel raise the value. This is much lighter than these guys. 
but it's all gotten a little whiter, a little higher value than it normally would have. But more importantly, it's gotten a little grayer because it's got that white is a light gray. It's got a little grayer. So it's helped to harmonize. But also the green is a slightly bluer green. The blue is a slightly redder blue, and the red is a slightly bluer red. They all have either red or blue in them. Since it's gray, they've moved closer to the color wheel, and they all have a blue, they all have blue in it. So they all have shifted towards blue a little bit. Now if I come in, but I have three colors, still three colors. Now if I pushed everything very strongly blue, it would just get more and more harmonious. And at some point it can get not muddy but boring, and that's up to you to decide when that happens. But um, so now everything's got the most. Everything's gotten very blue. It's keyed to blue. But you could have also said it got yellow in all the lights and blue in all the shadows. And since you had three striking colors and two strong light sources, it's nice to have a third to let some other color jump off the beam. These all shift into a very blue, and then we let our red. So we have blue shadows, yellow lights, and that red apple becomes our third color. So sometimes if you got a real strong two or three colors, it's nice to have a third color key as a foil. What you'd want to do as a designer, and I'm going to rush into this quick, what you want to do as a designer is make one of the three colors a little smaller. So they're not all the same subject matter, preferably two of the three a little smaller. So if we made, uh, move the green grass up, say. Higher. This is the biggest chunk, this is the next big, this small. They each have a different chunk of the picture, so it's not so long. You know. Let's uh, stop there and go ahead and do our last couple of sets. And we'll talk about this again next week, and we'll talk about the reflective.